We're now going to bath Toby. I use a professional hydro bath, but I know most of you won't have this. So what I'd recommend you do is do them in your own bath, use some form of restraining. Uh, what is ideal is a colour and lead and a rubber mat in the bottom of your bath. It prevents your dog from slipping and it'll stop scratching in your bath. Make sure that you are prepared before you actually start your bathing, just as we did when we were clipping. We're now going to mix our shampoo. A lot of people ask me how much shampoo we should be using. Read the directions on the label. Add the amount that is required, not what you think you should add. This dilution is about a 50 to 1. So I've got here just over a pint of water. One teaspoonful. More shampoo doesn't mean a cleaner dog. This is now going to be mixed in with our water. Mix it thoroughly. And that's all ready now for our dog. I'm going to drop in a scrunchie. And this is what we're going to use to wash our dog. Toby's now going to go into the bath. Good boy, Toby. I'm going to pop the restrain around his neck to stop him from jumping out and to stop him from getting us wet. You're going to use your collar and lead if you're using your own bath. Good boy. Good boy. There we go, Toby. I'm going to add the shampoo to his feet. Then I'm going to work it in well with my hands because these are always the dirtiest bits on the dog. These and his ears. That's more shampoo. Work it up his leg. Good boy. And work it in well. As you can see, our teaspoonful of shampoo has made us plenty of foam. There we go. I'm going to work our way down the side. We'll do all one side. We're going to be methodical, just like when we were clipping him. Good boy. It'll probably take you, when you're doing him yourself, in a bath, it'll probably take you a good five minutes to completely wash your whole dog all the way. A dog of this size, a larger dog obviously will take longer. You really need to work the shampoo in with your fingers. You notice that we're bathing the dog without wetting his body first. It's far more efficient to use the diluted shampoo on the dog this way. We leave his head till last because as soon as it's on his head he's likely to shake and secondly we don't want any more shampoo in his face than we need. I am using a proper dog shampoo the reason being, the pH balance on a human shampoo is not the same as that on a dog shampoo. Good boy, Toby. Good boy. Good boy. Good boy, Toby. Toby's now ready to be turned round to do the other side. So I'm going to unhook Toby, and I'm going to turn his head inwards, not outwards. You get some dogs that can't wait to get out of the bath. If you turn him towards the wall, he's less likely to, to try and jump out. And I'm going to do exactly the same now on this side. Good boy, Toby. Good boy. You can see I'm being methodical and I'm working my way all round his four legs, under his tummy, working it all in with my hand. I'm now going to go to his ears and I'm going to put a little bit of soap on each ear. And I'm going to hold the ears and I'm keeping the water and soap out of his ears as much as possible. Good boy, Toby. That's a good boy. And I'm going to do round his eyes and round his muzzle last. I'm now going to do the rest of Toby's face and we're doing that last as I said it to keep any soap out of his eyes now use your scrunchie around his little face around his ears and around his muzzle 
work it in with your hands. Springers and cockers especially have very dirty ears and they're very greasy. And if your dog, if you've left any grease in your dog when you come to finish him, they won't look nice. Good boy. Good boy. Good boy. Let me just give him a quick scrubble again with my hands. Good boy, Toby. I'm now going to put all the warm, rinse all the shampoo through him to make sure he's nice and clean. This particular bath has a wash tank that the shampoo will go into and it'll just recycle around the dog to clean him. At this point, what I'd suggest you do if you have your own bath is just add a little warm water all over him and then massage it in with your hands. I'll put that out of the way. Right. I'm just checking the water temperature, which is what you're going to need to do in your shower. Come on, Toby. Good boy. Good lad. Good boy. Good boy, Toby. We're just rinsing the last of the soap off, Toby. So Toby now has had two shampoos and two rinses. Rinse, rinse, hold the ears closed. Good boy, Toby. And I'm going to methodically work my way around rinsing him. Oops. Good boy, Toby. Right, Toby's now been washed twice and rinsed twice. I'm now going to remove the excess water from him and towel dry him. Removing the excess water with my hands all over him and then we need to get him get the towel on him to keep him warm and dry oh toby i'm going to dry his face first good boy good boy we don't have to rub hard but just remove as much excess water as you possibly can good boy Good boy, it's of your foot. Good boy. And his coat should be squeaky clean. And you'll be able to feel it with your hands and it has a squeak. Right, Toby should feel beautifully clean, squeaky clean. You can even hear the squeak when you run your fingers down his ears. Right, I'm going to towel, towel him now. Good boy. Remove all the excess water and then we're going to move on to our dryer. You probably noticed how well behaved Toby is, except he likes to sit down because he gets bored. Toby's used to being clipped, bathed, dried. Many dogs won't behave like Toby does and they might be a little agitated, so be patient with them. Maybe the first time give them one wash, one rinse, and dry them. Or even not dry them with the hairdryer to begin with. You'll have to try and see what your dog will tolerate, but the secret is to start your dog off as young as possible. By the time the dog is 14 weeks, he should be already had three or four baths. If he needs to be professionally groomed, where you can't do him yourself, take him to the groomer just to visit the groomer, to stay for the morning, just to go in for a bath and a brush up. And it'll make his life and your life a lot easier as he grows up. Good boy, Toby. There you go. Good boy. We're now going to... Oh, good shake. Right, I'm now going to dry Toby. This is a professional dryer. It's got various speeds. It can be cold, warm, or quite hot. 
I don't recommend you use a hot dryer on a dog. It's only in the rarest of occasions if you need to straighten the hair on something like a poodle. So we're going to use a warm temperature. Dry Toby's ears first. Good boy, Toby. Good boy. Good boy, Toby. Are you going to lie down? Good boy. Good boy. I'm holding his ears while I dry them. Good boy. Good boy. All the time I'm drying him, I keep the brush moving. This will prevent any brush burning, overheating of the ear, or the skin. And just do it gently. Good boy, Tobes. Good boy. Turn Toby round a little bit so I can get to the other ear. Very patient boy. The way I use the air is, the way the hair blows, that's the way I brush. So brush with the way it grows and the way it blows. Boy. Toby, come on, Toby. Good boy. You sit up for me, Toby. Work my way down his chest. And if, if at any time I want to check to see how dry Toby is, I use the back of my hand on his skin and that will tell me if, if he's dry or not. who don't have the big professional dryer you can use your little handheld dryer at home most of these dryers have a two heat setting you need to run it on low and make sure that you never hold it straight onto the dog's back without moving it I'll show you turn it on and keep it moving and if you keep it moving you're not going to do any damage to your dog if you hold it in one place it could be too hot for him the downside of using the hand dryer, of course, is the fact that you don't have a hand free to brush your dog. But that's fine. On a coat like his, you don't have to brush continually. Toby doesn't mind that at all. Now Toby's dry, we're going to go back to the reclipping and the finishing of Toby.